Welcome to the biology section of our practice MCAT questions. In this video, we're going to be going through questions 136 to 140. So first, I'll show you guys the questions so you can pause the video and attempt them on your own. Here's question 136, 137, 138, 139, and 140. Now let's go through the questions together. In question 136, we're asked which of the following is involved in post-translational processing in prokaryotes. So post-translational processing, we're talking about prokaryotes. Post-translational processing means after a protein has been translated, if we add some modifications on it, like adding some phosphate group, adding a glycan group, adding a lipid group, something like that. But the thing is, right now we're talking about prokaryotes, remember? So these are, these are organisms which don't have membrane-bound organelles in their cells, and they don't have post-translational processing. So they don't have a Golgi apparatus or, hold on, or a ribosome. Well, they do have a ribosome, but they don't have post-translational processing, and they definitely don't have a nucleus. So D is the correct answer. Prokaryotes do not perform post-translational processing after they have translated their protein. In question 137, it says the duodenum is where most chemical digestion takes place in the intestines. Which of the following statements would you expect to be true about the duodenum? So this is a place where we have the most chemical digestion taking place. And then which of these statements is true? The rest are false. The duodenum has a strong presence of digestive enzymes. Yes, that makes sense. We're told that this is where we have the most chemical digestion, meaning we're breaking things down using chemical processes on top of just using mechanical processes like churning. So yeah, we do expect a strong presence of digestive enzymes. The duodenum lacks arterial supply. No, this doesn't make sense. It's a site of a lot of digestion, meaning a lot of activity is taking place here. And so we need a blood supply to, you know, have energy for these processes that are taking place. We need fresh, fresh oxygen coming in all the time. We also need fresh nutrients and then we need waste to be taken away. So yeah, we do have a strong blood supply. We do have arterial supply. It doesn't make sense that it would lack an arterial supply. The duodenum in option C, it says the duodenum is a vestigial apparatus. That doesn't make sense. Vestigial apparatus would be something that, you know, is... A remainder of evolution it had a purpose in a past ancestor but now it doesn't in the current species that we're talking about but of course we do use the duodenum all the time it's very important for us vital part of our digestive system so it's not something which is just left behind and it has no purpose nowadays so it's not a vestigial apparatus c is incorrect and option d is saying it is highly susceptible to infection no this doesn't make sense if you have a a part of your body where digestion of food is taking place, this is something very key. If, if it, this part could be infected, then that infection could go forward in your digestive system and then enter your bloodstream and then spread throughout your body. So this part where anything relating to food and digestion and getting these nutrients into your body, that has to be very well protected from some attack by a pathogens, by any infection. So the immune system needs to be very strong there. So B, C, and D are incorrect, and an A is a true statement. In question 138, we are asked which of the following structures are responsible for differentiating color. So we have some structures. Which one helps us differentiate color? So color means that we must be talking about something in the eye. So the first two cones and rods are photoreceptors that are in the eye. So those are the options that we need to look at. And then A is correct. Cones help us look at color and they are responsible for high acuity vision, whereas rods are responsible for letting us observe light, especially low light. So rods is incorrect. The organ of corti, this is in the ear and it helps us hear things. So it's not related to seeing color. And then the loop of Henle, this is a part of the nephron in the kidney. It helps with, you know, balance of salts as well as yeah balance of salts mainly and water as well 
so it's not responsible for differentiating color. So D is incorrect. In question 139, it says erector pili. These are smooth muscles which associate with the dermal region of hair follicles in mammals. Their contraction results in hairs standing. Which of the following is false regarding these muscles? We're talking about these muscles, which are smooth type muscles. They help hairs stand up. And then what is false regarding these muscles? So the other ones are true. One of these is false. There is little to no vasculature in the region these muscles are found. No, that doesn't make sense. If there, if there wasn't vasculature, then, you know, it would be hard to have contraction of these muscles. Muscles contracting, that's kind of, it's a form of exercise. It's, it's a process that takes up resources in the cell. So you need a fresh supply of nutrients and you need waste nutrients to be taken away. So you do expect vasculature. Option B is saying innervation. Yeah, which one is false is what we're looking for. And option B is saying innervation of the muscles is by the sympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system. Oh, hold on. Since we were asked which one is false, A is a false statement, so A would actually be the correct answer, and then the other ones should be true. Option B is saying innervation of the muscles is by the sympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system, and this is something which is true, therefore it's an incorrect answer. Yes, it would be the sympathetic branch because this is a fight or flight part of the autonomic nervous system, and as you can imagine, that would be important for fight or flight. First of all, if you ever have you know, any fear response, your hair stand on end. And secondly, animals use hair standing on end all the time to make themselves look more bigger and more ferocious so that they can appear stronger to any predator or anyone that's attacking them. So it is part of the fight or flight system. So that is a correct statement. So we remove that answer because we're looking for something false. Option C is saying these muscles lack striations and this is a true statement as well because we're talking about smooth muscles which do not have striations. And finally, option D is talking about contraction of these muscles is due to increases in intracellular calcium concentration. And yes, that is a true statement as well. When you have contraction of muscles, you should know that first of all, we have release of calcium from the storage of calcium and then the calcium is then used to start the whole light and thick filament, thin and thin filament contraction system for muscles. So option A is a false statement, so it's a correct answer here. And finally, in question 140, it says a heart defect results in flipping of the aortic and pulmonic arteries while all other structures remain identical. Which of the following is a correct statement about this condition? So we have some heart defect, and then we got flipping of the two arteries. Everything else is identical. So which one is a correct statement? This means now, when the left ventricle contracts, instead of pushing blood into the aorta and then going to the systemic system, it's now pushing blood towards the, through the pulmonary artery into the pulmonary system. So left ventricle is pushing blood to get oxygenated and then it's gonna come back and then it's going to be collected in the left atrium again. So usually, after the pulmonary system, when the oxygen is, when the blood is oxygenated, it comes to the left atrium, which then goes into the left ventricle, and then it should go to the rest of the body, the systemic system. But now this is kind of a closed and contained loop, and it's just going to keep going in that cycle. And then on the other hand, the systemic cycle is also closed now because blood in the right atrium goes to the right ventricle, which now pushes blood into the aorta. Instead of going to the pulmonary system, the right ventricle pushes blood into the aorta, this now goes throughout the systemic system, which is the body, and then it comes back and it's collected from the vena cava into the right atrium, and it goes back into the right atrium, meaning that this blood keeps on going through the body and then coming back to the heart, and it doesn't have a chance to be oxygenated. So the systemic system does not have oxygenated blood, and the pulmonary system just keeps on getting blood oxygenated again and again, and it doesn't have a chance to give this oxygen to the body's tissues. So option A is saying no blood would become oxygenated. This is incorrect because the blood that's in the pulmonary system is continually being oxygenated. Option B is saying the direction of pulmonary circulation would reverse. No, it's not like the direction of the blood flow reverses. It's just that now we have two separate systems instead of them being connected. 
Option C is saying systemic blood will lack oxygen, and this is a correct statement, so it is true. And that's because of what I said. The two systems are cut off. The systemic system keeps on going to the body and then collecting back into the right atrium and then going back to the right ventricle, and where from there it's just pumped back into the body instead of being oxygenated. And finally, it says the left ventricle will pump blood into the aorta. No, this doesn't make sense because the left ventricle normally does pump it into the aorta, but we're told that this defect now flips the two arteries, so it's going to pump blood into the pulmonary artery instead of the aorta. So C is the correct answer here. That's it for the questions in this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, make sure to check out our course. The link is right here as well as in the description below. And in that course, we go through a lot more questions just like this and explain all the different answer options to you. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, make sure to subscribe here to stay up to date and I will see you guys in the next video.